is the very infraction the first lady in office commits by writing personal letters to businesses and institutions and by soliciting a specific amount of fund mm -hmm. for what? For privileges and access to the president. I want to make you talk about this and how Dan they and 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 for me the reason the one thing I really want to make you zone in on is the is the fact that let's say everything else that the African press has said about you know the illegalities of the first lady is wrong. This is a clear law. But we also have evidence of how that law has been abridged. I want to make you talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Um going back when we first published about the allocation of public funds to the office of the first lady, um, in not deny receipt of, of public funds, he admit to her. He used the money according to her judiciously. He used her for the intended purpose. And he challenged we, he challenged basically the African Express, the first lady challenged the African Express for sure evidence, say he not use the money judiciously. Oh, he also say he no one they take from personal personally from you know money for in, for himself so we say okay um since you challenge we forget the evidence we could produce some you know and and we we get we get the evidence so we say let let the evidence speak for itself we first start by showing exactly that in 2018 alone all of all of the money allocated almost to the cl close to 8 billion was spent frivolously it was spent without regard to public uh, finance regulations, no bidding for the purchase of furniture, repeated purchase of furniture, fuel, and all of this uh, thing, the purchase of tickets. And also, we even published a few days ago, we don't publish even the full 2018 bank statement for sure, the records, transaction details, and all of that. Um, for sure, so exactly, we have not accused anyone of anything. And we are not making allegations. We are basically um, exposing how public finances have been used. The influence of the president, the, the wife of the president, is used in the position of her husband um, to solicit money from businessmen and business organizations with, with a promise or with a pledge that if you contribute 50 million or 100 million, you will get, this, you will get an opportunity for get 10 tickets to the presidential dinner, the annual presidential dinner, and not only that, that the sitting sitting arrangement at the dinner is going to be done according to uh, order of payment. That if you don't have the possible first pay, you go in at the front, you go in near the, the paper. And we show the letters. And what to make the letters interesting are the fact that the letters were written under the letterhead of the office of the first names to the Mada and Fatima Bio Foundation. That is a charity a supposed charitable organization that was established by the president and his, the current president and his wife before they became president. And that in itself raises another question of conflict of interest because, you know, a sitting president and his wife cannot run um, a foundation. Using this, the status of her husband, you know, you can do fundraising, but here is about saying, when I give me a social amount of money and this is what you get in return. So that now, uh, you know, there is exchange with them called, um, um, basically, you depend on the interest. wife for solicit money from business people and, and interest not even business people alone, even government agencies. I mentioned some time ago, again, that um, there's a similar kind of organization called JMB Women's Wing and Associates. They also have their own various contributions and fundraising activities that they've been doing that they lodge into their own separate accounts. Sure. Who is auditing the First Lady? The First Lady refused to be audited. They did not submit receipts and documents. They basically, they, they did not allow the audit service for audit. I've had various government people, including people from the Anti-Corruption Commission, ACC, they talk about the Office of the First Lady is captured on the audit. It's, it's not captured on the audit. The audit is clear in terms of um, the fact that um, these people yeah. refuse to be audited, that funds that we are going to them should not be audited. And that is why they even tend to argue, or this argument that the Office of the First Lady is under the Office of the President. There's no such arrangement in the Constitution. There's no such, I mean, the wife of a president is just the wife of a president called Office of the First Lady. That name, office, was first used by Madame Siakuruma but the setting up of a bank account hmm, 
know, that is run by the wife of the president, started on June 28th was in 28. the amount of 2 billion, 980 million, lodged into the Bank of Sierra Leone when the account was first opened on June 28, 2018. This first lady, current first lady, say, ain't not being, ain't not to income create account, income meet account. But the truth is that that account was non existing. Now, where income then create that account, say, that is not disputing the fact that Siako might not be get money and run programs them under in your office. True, because we all saw that, we all know that. But as of the establishment of a uh, you know, separate bank account just for the office of the first lady, now under this um, first lady, so key that responsibilities of the office of the chief minister now for make sure, say. He, 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 he monitor all of the government ministries, departments, and agency for make sure say wastage no day, for make sure say he close any gaps, usai wastage day, and indirectly, not to in your office no more, he also directly accountable for any wastage or any kind of corruption or malpractices then where they happen na the different Chief Minister's office has denied the um, the report and the details we've published. They have only tried to say it is it is normal. That is how things are run. In fact, we highlight that apart from this budgetary allocation, we also show that much of that money was spent on padiems by you know the, through the travel international travels by various officials we showed the officials who received these padiems and the transaction they said padem padiems are legal and we also showed that in fact 10 billion almost a million dollars of that amount that you're talking about was withdrawn cash mm -hmm. more than a million dollars was withdrawn cash predominantly by one individual yes um, so yes. We, we, we showed that we you know, we've demonstrated that nobody has said no. They are just saying it's normal. Okay, we have, in fact, the chief minister issued a statement, um, not denying the the report, but basically saying that um, it, it get a number of units under your Plenty. office. Because I am sure there are many people in government, other ministries, departments, and agencies who are not receiving the complete budgetary allocation in a year. If you, if you remember, when the chief minister uh, 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 announced that the minister of finance was the best minister, the minister of finance said on television live that he's apologizing. He made an apology to the other government ministries and departments that, you know, he's sorry for not allocating to them what their complete budgetary allocation. Some, not, some get only the first quarter, two quarters, or some get three quarters, some not get the complete uh, a yearly allocation they're supposed to forget. So what the, what that press when you read that press release, it's coming from this idea. The chief minister was not speaking to the public; he was speaking to other people in government. That although I am receiving this huge amount of money for just administrative purposes, I also have four different units, including DSTI and all these other uh, units we cite in the press release, basically to justify why he's receiving more money than other government ministries. That's that's what that's the that's the reason. That's amusing when we saw it. That's what we we said. But in fact, coming back, they went on record to say that their use of the money through sole sourcing, restricted restrictive bidding without open bidding and open tender was authorized by the uh, National Public Procurement uh, Authority, which is supposed to ensure that procurement rules are followed. Then, the same way the ACC defended or appears to have defended the. Uh, uh, chief Minister. Now, so again, the NPPA come out and begin defending. Uh, I mean, the, the other one and defend the first lady. This other one and can and defend the Chief Minister. So, so for every time you point, when we talk about timber, for example, um, towards the end, towards October, November to December, the Minister of Finance came to their defence, and even a few days ago, the NRA, the National Revenue Authority uh, Director General, was on was on radio defending and trying to justify that this was a mistake, it was an error. How can you violate a law that you've made up and say now? So they defend the company for refusing to pay taxes. Three yeah. vehicles, Prado vehicles, were bought from Salman Motors without tender, without bidding. It's a, an expenditure that is close to $2 billion, okay? 
Nobody has denied that that was the case. And we said, we have checked the record and we are not sure whether all those three Prado vehicles were supplied. Mm. And that this okay. office of the chief minister or the chief minister is authorized to um, assess who is the best minister or who is the best ministry performing minister to the extent that a few weeks ago, the same individual said the Ministry of Finance and, and even the Minister of Basic Education, the people who are operating these accounts, who are running these affairs, are the best ministers in government. So we have a cut-off. Uh, um, Cheng Nobi say 34 billion news, um, the news are for, on procurement and irregular, uh, on irregular procurement. Some of them, them revelation they are where they come out, where they name the office system and the procurement process system. You office nobody. Yeah, I want to set some things then straight here. Yeah, I'm not going to go to any office. I just want to put things straight as a regulatory institution. When MDAs want for buy, do they come to us seek clearance? Yes. Then they come to we for seek clearance. And when we then seek clearance to we, you get different methods than what they use for the procurement. Yeah? You can do the default method when I open tender. And at the same time, the MPPA get the powers. I just want to read sections of as chief executive the law give me the mandate in an event an mda want for buy any item in this country and uh, they see the level of urgency or no urgency he writes to me and asks say okay i want for do so source i want for do restrictive tender i want for do open tender reduce for me instead of four weeks reduce for me for two weeks reduce for me for three weeks I have the mandate and power based yeah, on this law. This big, um, press pool, this, um, um, because they show their documents them where they show the prices, where they call, where they say can, nah, uh, uh, um, the prices are inflated. Can we, if we, if we, if we go now to this approval why I gave, yes, the, I gave an approval for the purchase of vehicles and IT equipment. Uh, in the office of the presidency, there are certain things where, of course, the law gives we demanded for the restrictive or sources like some of the it issues where they do and that the minute we come to me was clearly for the office of the president in setting the it infrastructure and if then they set the it infrastructure for the office of the president of course that is security i will not allow them to go in an open tender so when they send them i read the minute i saw the justification i gave the approval no you understand did they ask for approval Yes, yes. So let we look at NPP and saving um, uh, the government started inside 2019. Mm -hmm. You've been tell, um, I mean, inside an interview, but how um, you save governments from losing 400 billion loans. Um, so what are you able to save governments inside 2020? Because we don't go now into 2021. With all the issues there, we always they can't say, um, come out with the show weakness in the system. Uh, very, very soon we will see a bulletin come out for the last quarter of 2020. And that bulletin, you see how much we protect and prevent government from getting into contract that are not. We don't do. I want to just take case in point. For me, MPPA, I took MPPA with just 37 staff. And it, within that 37 staff, few don't go, skill and unskilled labor. Skill and unskilled. And as I speak now, we are about 112 to 113 to do the job for Sierra Leone. So if you see the, 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 the wages don't increase, it's not just coming from the Ministry of Finance. Even we at the MDAs, when I took over as, 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 as chief executive, I cannot run with 37 people. Even with the 100 people, 112 people that I have now, it's still not enough to regulate and monitor procurement across here and effectiveness. Now, the only concern I get, I want to let my brother know, say, it is only the MPPA that has the power to interpret this law. Because outside of the court, Naina, the, na, they are the only people who sabi interpret procurement laws, to which I say absolutely yet. First of all, procurement laws, for the most part, is an international standardized law. We mean say anybody will study procurement, anybody will get an understanding and knowledge of the, 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 the implementation, the policies, rules and regulations of procurement can interpret the procurement law whether you're in a country or not.
You don't need for the inside particular country for understand the procurement law because it's a standardized, standardized international law where they govern most place system around the world. But you want buy vehicle for them or you want buy computers, you, you advertise the contract, people bid, then go through competitive bidding, transparent process, you select the most, you know, maybe we the time to justify say this what this individual owner hand pick <laughs> and get a contract the offer on a less because that's a claim. When you check even the amount, we're talking about close to two billion, okay, for three vehicles. Even more than the amount of money, the amount of money that was taken out of the account and paid to Salma Motors is more than the amount of money that he is yeah, talking no about. No evidence that all the three vehicles were submitted. He did they not answer. not that. denied any of the details we have all published. Infractions, violations, they will cite a law that tends to justify their violation of another law. Okay? Or they're saying a mistake. For example, we caught these people. Um, who they, they made a law around how much an exporter of timber for pay. That was an obvious violation because they have no other law to cite. They say the government about transparency and accountability. Why you go through all that, all that particular process? The Budget Advocacy Network, which is a consortium of civil society organizations engaged in transparency, then remind NPPSA, even when the audit report released the audit, much of what they talk about is some of these issues and how much money is lost as a consequence of some of these violations. The only reason why you go restrict a bidding because you get a preferred um, bidder of your choice. And right. most part, that preferred bidder is somebody you share either an economic interest in or some other kind of interest, favored interest. It's supposed to be the, the minister with the in charge of enforcing all of these compliance. Why in the violation? It's on record to tell the commission that he was fixing, as a procurement officer, he was fixing documents for his bosses for justify the violation of a cover-up, the violation of systems and procedures. And here is a man now presenting a document again saying he gave an authorization to the chief minister to undertake procurement of um, over 30 billion money spent without regard, not a one time, oh, this is the way it has been ongoing and it's 60 million in a week, 70 million in a week, 200 million in a week, 250 million in a week. What are you doing? And most times when you look, when you look at the dates, now go check the banks that will publish. When you check the dates, you find out that most of these withdrawals are taking place on a weekend or a day before the weekend or on a Friday. It happens mm -hmm. on, part on Fridays or on Thursdays, a day before the close of the week or the last business day of the week, which means this money is withdrawn for the weekend. Why? Is government operating on the people weekend? of Sierra Leone and everybody who is a friend of Sierra Leone, including international partners who sometimes support our budgetary, who give budgetary support 40% or 50% or they are about of our budget supported by what you call donor money. To look at these records and even ignore our own analysis because we, on our own analysis, we've analyzed, looked at records. And you, can, you get one million ways of analyzing that these evidence was presented. A few days ago, somebody called me and said, oh, one me, Paddy just called me. He said, even, even they work for DSTI. In fact, that they want to go Estonia. He said, we draw uh, four times. He said, exact, they counted four times. The same time they go. He said, even I know me. So I said, oh, how would we miss these things? So for, the kind, for, the, for that individual, in fact, it was mind-blowing to see that what, the individual thought was secret hmm, that is captured in some of these reports. The other, I see another person has we interviewed testified that, oh, they just give me this check, no more, say, go cash and bring the money back to them. In fact, 500,000, 50 million. We are not criminalizing your salary. We are basically saying that if it doesn't make sense for a financial secretary to be paid 100 million when a nurse who is an essential worker is receiving. Right. Uh, you know, this one is getting ten thousand dollars. This other person is getting um, two hundred. What every judiciary has said, take over the uh, procurement authority with little over thirty staff. Now he has over hundred staff. It comes straight to what we talked about that this administration has grafted, they've in, incorporated a lot of political appointees on the public payroll with an hard pressure on the wage bill, which means right. employ their own party members, party supporters, party youths, 
family and friends. We just saw one. For example, you have the former minister, the former ambassador of Sierra Leone to or High Commission of Sierra Leone to Kenya was the brother of the chief minister. The brother yeah. of the passed away. You appoint the uh, daughter or whatever of the um, uh, uh, speaker of the African Express. We are just journalists who just write. No, we are also educated people. Among our, our group of people, we have economists, we have procurement officers, we have people with knowledge of statistics, we have people with knowledge of history, people with okay. knowledge of political science, with systems government. That's why when we write, you, 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 the same, you have not denied anything that was pointed out. You just found a crooked way of interpreting the legislation to justify why you did not follow the law. Hello, okay. Uh, thank you so much. This is uh, Salu, as a call from Israel, Kenya, Eastern province. On the man, I demand this. The allegation they make, when you sometimes they post on a Facebook page, when you, when you go, they become critical of the allegation there, and they block you. So I'm not sure about a uh, 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 comment on this particular one. Mm-hmm. Expert in procurement, not clear the air. So I, I don't know if you say we'll go further with this step, because he's an expert. He don't talk with him for talk. Exactly. Now, what happened? According to you, yeah, you, you say the head the technical procurement, I want to hold you there just because so that we clear this. Not to so inner the mm-hmm. only person we Sabi interprets the procurement rules and regulations. I want to hold you there just because now in at the head of the procurement department at Salo, no mean for say now in one grain, now this one, Sabi interprets procurement rules and regulations. Procurement no, 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 rules and regulations can be interpreted by anybody within the procurement industry in any part of the world. I know, I mean, our brother, Stephen. Man, the entire uh, uh, civil servant, the entire administration brings new persons at the same thing. Why? Because we get a system with the self perpetuate within the go on, you know. And so, it's okay. I mentioned something that says, I love not begin guessing. I love good that we get sense. But yeah. We, 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 one of the things we get for, we get for do for go in our country, but some of holding our overseas, we get for good, we get for good raise of a campaign, we get for the condition people they have. The one they already in ABC, now they, now they gladly, you know, always, every single one, now they gladly, you know, the one they already in SFPT, even though where they know, the one they will be there, they will be the speak harshly against the, the, the ease of APC today, then they speak remotely, more mutedly, if ever, not at all, you know, because now they only need it. Johnson from the United States. If the law is broken, as long as it's in my favor, quite if those rules are not followed that are laid down by the Constitution, nobody is going to respect it. Now, there's no respect in Sierra Leone for the Constitution. I the call from New Jersey. Me now, one possibility for you for Mr. Barr every day and any well meaning Sierra Leone yeah. from Tenima. It, 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 it's sad for you from somebody like they wanted to say. Even within the year, the fact you say as far as saloon level is concerned, mm. what does that mean? This time, um, Mohammed, the call from um, Anchorage, Alaska. We didn't find out see, the previous first lady then get. Why we not go tackle the present thing where they can go on right now? We tackle the problem right now. Let them investigate what thing they say right now. The problem. Let them investigate um, the one. A block, um, whether they a block or whatsoever. But this time, make up since. I think this is a very good opportunity. Make I just address this Facebook page or any other page run by any in the name of the African Express, including even the website. You're free for make comment if you want to make comment, but make a comment in a responsible way because I have, for example, on my Facebook, personal Facebook page, I have about 5,000 people. We already did it. You just can't check. Some are Australian, some are non Australian. You know, can insult you know, can't do my because on my page, you expect say, I will left him there. You know, you know, insult me, audience. It's not about me. Because for me, you I they receive audio messages, I they receive text messages, I they receive me and inbox messages. I have said um, there was going to be a time, this is Tubaku, where I will publish some of these things. This person called me, say I cannot listen. He said, I know they're able to listen all the time. He said, because some of he said it's too vulgar page. who are behaving responsibly. Who sometimes when they make comments, as he say, he deserve respond. I can go and respond, uh, address the question. If they ask another question, I address. So when I say them, they repeat the same question. I leave them. On who that. are well behaved, who are sticking on the issues. But I block people who have nothing to contribute. Okay, that evidence. We also present the evidence. People they tell you say, hey, bring evidence. Now we don't bring evidence. 
these people are still um, offended by the yes. evidence. So you will talk, say this thing no go done. If you be not say this not so idea, not so no more for day, why you been decide say you go change her? Why mm-hmm. you also pretend say you they make a commission for whole people respond for the same things that you're doing? So that kind of hypocrisy that I saw behind the curtains, behind the scenes, which is what drove the African press to investigate and bring this to the public mm-hmm. domain. Jim, it, it predates Madabio, it predates even Anaskoma. Anaskoma, yeah. So yeah. Just now, now, and at this, I want to make a lot of people uh, they, yeah. they understand. 20 you know, years, a lot 20 of, years of work. Yeah. A lot of people think, say, oh, this is all about, you know, um, in blackmailing the SLPP government. This is all about sabotaging the efforts of the SLPP government. This, that. Why children are not being the top? People, do your research. Each specific year. Exactly. Keyword. Each specific year. Exactly. And it goes on further to say, Section 18 of the Public Procurement Act of 2016, one of the laws that regulates public procurement in Sierra Leone specifically provides that all goods and services procured by a minister or department must be included in the prior approved in the exactly. prior approved annual procurement plan for that uh, um, um, entity and that the procurement um, committee must be in charge of a procurement Why for parliament if it's going to be a token parliament. Why have ministers if they are just only going to be there to do what, what they please? Then we might as well not have elections. I don't talk about the interest. I don't talk about, you know, one person alone withdrawing, you know, over a hundred million of, of, of you know, <laughs> withdrawal in cash. A hundred million. Like, can you imagine? Push for increased transparency in governance and in the management of public resources. Not what we get for do. We get for a predate the power power regime eager for also go beyond the power power regime you guys you know me we have worked together uh, over 20 years i have written articles that you have published in your newspapers example the global times um you did not even pay me for those articles you ran them free because you think they served your instance office i would name him abraham john was um um registrar for the political parties registration commission was accused of corruption by this is somebody that we also defended and said no the politics not the office this individual wrote an article had his name and put in the article that mina from mckinney that i have been paid <laughs> so you make these stories this is not the same person when i've been witness for the whole time that i was criticizing the apc standing up against the apc in fact the institution will work that the institution will support dissident for destabilize the work we'll be do against the APC. So basically, he was being paid under an APC government. Now he is working in the office of the chief minister. Because I know in the final analysis, the last word is going to be ours. The people of Sierra Leone are going to pass a verdict against corrupt leaders. They have done it in the past. They're going to do um, it again. Without these kinds of uh, uh, platforms, this kind of message never don't go out the way it is. We have, I think, we are in an amazing place. When we started, people decided to keep us keep the conversation aside. The collective voice of the people cannot be ignored. That voice going, our collective voices will change a lot of things. We have succeeded in undercutting the false narrative of the state around corruption, good governance. If we continue this. Definitely not this name will lead to the change we want. And it's going to happen. So thank you very much. Exactly. Thank you very much, Mr. Ba. Change is going to happen. Change take time sometimes. Change take resistance sometimes. But one thing that is for sure with persistence, change does happen.